Hello and welcome to Rajya Sabha Television. You're watching The Big Picture with me, Frank Pereira. The Prime Minister's office has directed the Ministry of Finance to fund the losses incurred by the railways in operating non-profitable trains on strategic lines and backward areas. The directive ends a tussle that began after the merger of the railway and union budgets, as the Finance Ministry discontinued the practice of providing annual subsidy to the railways. According to reports, at a meeting held last month, the Prime Minister's office directed the Finance Ministry reimburse the losses incurred by the railways. The meeting was uh, chaired by Nripendra Mishra, uh, Principal Secretary to the Prime Minister, to resolve the issue. The decision comes as a relief to the railways, which feels that the social service obligation borne by it in running non-profitable lines of national and strategic importance should be funded by the central government. On this edition of The Big Picture, we will analyze if this move can bring in a reversal of railway fortunes. Join me on the program today are Prem Pal Sharma, former Executive Director, Railway Board. T.K. Arun, Editor, Opinion, The Economic Times. Satish Misra, Senior Fellow, Observer, Research Foundation. And Subodh Jain, former member, Railway Board. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on this edition of The Big Picture. Mr. Sharma, I'd like to begin with you. What do you think of the Prime Minister's uh, office, you know, directing the Finance Ministry to, to subsidize or, or, or repay, you know, some of these uh, losses that the railways has incurred as a result of running non-profitable lines. Yeah, no surprise for me. Because when the, we merged railway budget with the main, uh, it should have been sorted out that time itself. So I, I, I don't think there was any need that it should depend with Ministry of Finance. Because now everything is now controlled by Ministry of Finance. So now uh, obviously it should be, and especially you just think of strategic lines, hilly area, import imp of national importance. Now, this is the very important area. So, when we are subsidizing, heavily subsidizing passenger uh, traffic and various other social welfare like uh, that senior citizens, sports quota, defense, so various kind of activities. So now, obviously, should have been that long back without any debate or uh, discussion. And as uh, uh, somebody commented, now there is no need for every time for pending these things. I think Ministry of Finance and Railway, they should sit together. Because you remember some time back, there was a, uh, some debate or dispute for uh, the dividend or the, or the public sector undertakings. So the same it happened. So now it should not be. You know, you know this is a right, good decision. This was bound to happen, wasn't it? Because, you know, a few months ago, we had a discussion when, the, uh, when, when both the budgets were merged together. We, we spoke about what are some of the issues that might crop up. And this was one of them that did... Uh, come up at that point in time. So this was unexpected lines then? Uh, it's not expected. I think this has become, uh, I think that we have to now uh, the, go in a different efficient way of working instead of pending files uh, with the Minister of Finance or Minister of Railway. So now the, the moment somebody is a decisive vote is there, then automatically this, these things should not be. Sure. So, you know, T.K. Arun, as far as uh, the railways itself is concerned, how much of a relief will this be for the railways? I don't think this will be such a big relief. You know, in, in general, in principle, I agree with this. But the reality is that this is not the only thing where the railways are subsidizing people uh, for reasons which have nothing to do with the commercial viability of the railways. First of all, we don't even know what the subsidy is. Unless you are commercial accounting or the actual cost and actual revenues of the railways, you don't know what the real extent of subsidy is. So if you want to fund this subsidy, you must first have proper commercial accounting. In principle, just as you already agreed that when a state electricity board subsidizes the consumption of power by farmers because the government wants to give power to the farmers at a subsidized rate, the government is supposed to give that money as a subvention from the budget. Similarly, in principle, this is very clear. But how much it is, it's not clear because of the where the railway accounting is done. Secondly, why limit this to only to the strategic uh, sectors and hilly areas and all that? Why should the suburban passenger fares in Mumbai be subsidized by the railways? Why shouldn't the Mumbai uh, Municipal Corporation or the state government of Maharashtra bear this burden? So why do people in uh, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, uh, Kolkata, etc. not get the subsidy and why should only the people of Mumbai get the subsidy? So, Actually, state governments can actually uh, bid to subsidize uh, their uh, pa uh, passenger suburban uh, fares, 
and railways can happily allow many people to take part in this uh, subsidy contest and they can offer fares at a subsidized rates depending on how much the state government or the municipal corporation is willing to subsidize. Mm -hmm. So I don't see why this would be limited to just this uh, strategic routes and hilly areas. Indeed, fair enough. You know, uh, Mr. Subodh Jain, do you want to respond to what uh, Mr. T. K. Arun has just said? You know, the subsidy should be across the nation. Why just limited to certain uh, certain areas and and and, and certain regions? In fact, I uh, will entirely agree with Mr. Arun, but I will put it in a different perspective. Uh, first of all, I will take little time to define what is the present policy because I do not see it much as a result of merger of budget or not merger of budget. This should have been done long back. Today, the system of railway is that whatever new line is to be made, it will make losses, it is known. And the general budget used to sub, uh, pay for the capital cost. For the strategic lines, defense ministry used to pay for the capital cost. So capital cost subsidy we always had. But what we did not have is the uh, reimbursement of operating losses. Now, unless there is a freight traffic, say all over the world, transport profits are driven by the freight traffic. And the passenger traffic, whether be it a road, be it railway, be it India or be it Europe, they are always subsidized. They, there are very high fares in Japan and uh, China. They are also, unless there is a traffic density, passenger fares are subsidized. So if you want to run the enough number of passenger trains on these low traffic lines, they may be lines in the hill or they may be lines in the remote areas. The railway will make losses and unless you connect the remote areas, the traffic will not come to the mainland. After all, these are the branches which come to the arteries. So this was uh, because railway budget was separate, government always took a very adversarial position with service railways. Now this uh, dilemma is removed, budget is merged, we are all government of India and it's a very good step. Mr. Arun said that uh, railway commercial accounting and railway accounting procedures to be uh, streamlined and unless those are streamlined, uh, how can you work out the subsidy? There are, uh, there may be different views about the railway accounting procedures. But even today, the cost of service is well known. And even if uh, it will in Gujarat, it will differ in Assam because of the local issues, because of the uh, availability of labor and other things. World over the system is benchmarking. N nobody is going into your books. They say, you run a passenger train, we give you so much of charge per, uh, per kilometer per train, hmm. whether your train goes empty or your train goes full. Uh, so, uh, the other uh, nations, they have already reformed. What I feel is for this scheme to succeed or for this scheme to materialize, there will really have to be very robust uh, regulator. Otherwise, this will only remain an announcement. Railways will give some calculations. This is our losses for this line. There will be a tendency to inflate that. Even if they don't inflate, the person who has to give the subsidy, they will question that you could have improved efficiency. These are very subjective things. So let us hope a beginning has been done, things will get resolved and uh, inshallah uh, the railway will progress okay. and accord, accord, along with that the transportation need of the remote areas will be fulfilled. Sure. Satish Mishra, I'd like to bring you into the uh, picture now. You know, is that what's going to happen? The railways is going to give the finance ministry, you know, a figure saying that this is what uh, it's going to cost us. This is what you need to give us at this point in time. And the railways and the finance ministry is going to go back to them saying that, no, this is an inflated figure and this back and forth is going to continue. Or I, are, are we going to see uh, the departments work together? What needs to be done is a holistic approach. Hmm. Now, what is happening is it is a piecemeal approach. Now, once the government had decided there would be no two budgets, 
the issues which could have challenged should have been sorted out then and then and then the decision should have been taken to match the budget now it has not been done that's why you're seeing these these reports are coming that finance ministry pmo has intervenes and asks the finance ministry to to compensate to to look after no first of all it should be made clear that b railway ministry or finance ministry is government of india they are not different tafts now what is happening is that finance ministry officials think that they have a different turf they are the sanctioning people they they can sanction only they can challenge they can question i mean that is why i would agree totally agree with mr jain that there is a big need for a regulator in the independent regulator which can supervise and say here you are wrong and here you are right so this piecemeal approach always creates problems Seven months have gone. Now we are in August. Now, a month back, a, minute, a meeting takes place, and then PMO has to intervene. A superior authority has to intervene. That's why these things come up. This is not the right approach. Now, I hope that the problem has been addressed, and railway should function efficiently and should serve the people. serve the country and take decisions which are good for the larger cause sure you know uh, mr sharma as far as the railways is concerned huge social obligation you know uh, as far as the railways is concerned what is the kind of budget that the railway sets aside for this social obligation how much does it really cost the railways to to run these you know non profitable lines so all but non profitable is different issue the total the subsidy or around 40000 crore hmm. uh, now the one idea is coming to maybe this time the particular region for allowing this strategic and hills maybe the tension with china and pakistan because almost 40 lines we we proposed to uh, from bilaspur to leh from uh, srinagar to kargil and for entire northeast area so now there may be some compelling reason for that so now this requires a huge money so now if we continue to pend these things so now there tomorrow there may be some so i think the national importance line so now they have decided like that now another issue is as our that another friend for those uneconomic lines maybe after merger of budget earlier there a populist uh, approach was there that who's over minister he will announce some lines even if they are not economical so and every time railway will approve and then for loss will go and continuously bit go so now now regulator is one only now minister of finance so maybe uh, the, uh, clearly they should uh, bear entire burden of this strategic and important line and for those new lines where the doubling was done without even uh, realizing the uh, viability of those so that may be a now a better approach may be sure sure you know take care on the strategic lines of course is, is a matter is a different matter altogether you know when national uh, security comes into the picture then you really can't tinker with it but as far as the social obligation of the railways is concerned do you believe that this government is going to continue that because you've seen what's happened with air india it's very it's very very clear that uh, the government wants to do away with uh, with the loss making carrier air india so is the government going to go the same way as far as railways is concerned no no see the railways is a monopoly there is only one railways there is no way you can you know uh, get in somebody else in its place so you have to reform this now how to reform there has been any number of committees that have gone into this and come out with very sensible recommendations now uh, when you say the railways are uh, have social obligation of course they have uh, as mr mishra was saying uh, earlier uh, you know unless the railways extend a line to a particular area that area will not develop now till that area is fully developed you will not have sufficient traffic to justify that initial investment but this is a dynamic thing you cannot look at a static analysis and say right now because the traffic is so low uh, it doesn't make sense to extend a line and invest so much of money there but once you invest that line you might suddenly see that things have suddenly changed a whole uh, new industries might come out there and suddenly people might migrate there and the volume of traffic might more than justify that so you have to see these things in a dynamic uh, uh, concept now railways is what our migrant uh, 
uh, population uses to move from place A to place B. And India is an increasingly mobile uh, niche. People are moving uh, across the country, uh, in season, out of season, for work, for pleasure, for various things. Now, has the railways actually met its social obligation by creating the capacity that people need to travel and with safety? Safety is a very major issue with our railways. So this policy of saying that you know we are meeting social obligations and we are keeping fares low is creating a situation where you don't have money to invest in safety, where you don't have enough money to invest in additional capacity, and where you actually fail the poor people of this country, and you privilege certain people such as passengers of Bombay, and uh, you discriminate against uh, poor people from a far off remote area which are not even connected by railways. So I think you need to have a systemic overhaul as Mr. Amisha said. It's not just a piecemeal reform. You need to look at uh, the railways in a, in a more uh, organic whole as linked to the entire nation and how it, uh, its social and economic and strategic requirements are uh, concerned and how the railways will actually meet them. So, uh, but I repeat that point, you need sensible accounting of railway finances. Till then you do not really know what is the amount that the railways are actually spending, uh, what the, it should demand from different governments, whether state government or central government. And I see no reason why the state government should not fund the railways. Of course, now, right now we have certain rail corporations that have been set up with the participation of state governments in their uh, incorporation. The Konkan Railway, for example, hmm. has jointly with the Indian railways and the state governments along the uh, line of the railways. New things are being created under Suresh Prabhu's uh, leadership. Uh, some 17 corporations are being uh, created. So all these are good. But these will have proper corporate accounting. Uh, but unless the entire railways have corporate accounting and you have efficient utilization of whatever capacity you already have, you will not be able to expand further and invest further in safety and capacity to do justice to a claim of meeting social obligations. Sure, fair enough. You know, um, suppose Jane, a lot of talk has been, uh, has been ha we've, we've spoken a lot now over the last uh, 15 or 20 minutes about how a systemic overhaul is required as far as the railways is concerned. A holistic approach really is required, uh, you know, to turn around the railways. What according to you needs to be done at the earliest as an immediate step? See, if you want to make a radical change, as Mr. Arun is, uh, has expressed time and again, that why state governments are not participating the way they should participate and why a person sitting in Kerala should pay for the Bombay suburban people who is capable of paying for himself. There are two issues. Number one, post-independence. We have changed the railway and it, is, it has become purely a central subject. So either we put it in a concurrent list so that the state governments can take uh, their own decision about laying the railway lines. Pre-independence, this freedom was there with the state governments. And state governments have a freedom to fix up the fares also for whatever line they fix. I was in Mumbai for uh, most of my service career. The state government says, who, are, who is asking you to charge so low for the suburban fare? You keep on telling BMC should share the losses, the state government should share the losses. See, you charge your cost of service, people are prepared to pay. But my act says, all over India, I will charge the same fare. So this is something which, uh, which is a fault. Uh, I will not say fault, I, I am sorry, I uh, will take back my words on that. But this is something which requires a deeper thinking. Are we ready to change the allocation of business rules and put railway in a concurrent list? It's a big issue, let us uh, not discuss it in a casual manner. Sure. But uh, the one thing is sure that Indian railways cannot be compared with the other railway systems because the other uh, who, rest of the world the European railway reformed when the railway share had come down to 20 percent or even less than 20 percent of the total transport share. Hmm. We are still having a 36-38 percent of the transport share and particularly in the long distance passenger travel 
we have a very dominant share of the uh, railway has a very dominant share so railway will remain monopoly and people will expect railways to fulfill the social obligations also and fulfill the strategic obligations also okay so there has to be a very dynamic and transparent policy sure today people say that railways policy are politics uh, driven hmm. okay right you know you know mr mr so, uh, i'm i'm some, going to come back to you is favored some reason is not favored i'm going to come back to you mr jain but before that uh, you know mr mr mishra there's there's so much talk about social obligation there's so much talk about how the indian railways is a monopoly how it's it's you know it's doing so much for the people but uh, and also uh, you know mr jain drew parallel with uh, with the european rail system if you look at the european rail system it's far more advanced than our indian railways should we not then increase the prices or do something to ensure to aspire to be at that level Un undoubtedly it should be done but it should be done in a holistic manner once again so what are our Because options as i said if there is an independent regulator then even the price increase and price hikes would not depend on a certain political system for that matter that they want to approach elections are coming so we'll have populist approach we'll say we will not increase the fares no that is why you need independent regulators but independent really independent hmm. doesn't mean that independence only for the name sake but who has the courage to tinker with things like this because you increase prices by 50 paise or 1 rupee unless the you have courage then don't expect your railways to be like in europe you were said you you want to bring up the railways on the european standards for that you need courage okay unless there is courage nothing can be changed i mean for example mr jain was talking about bringing railways on the concurrent list i agree there should be a debate on it and the states must be asked to to take up to come up and contribute to the national exchequer there's that there, there's now once gst has come the states are going to have lot many uh, uh, um, finances earlier vat had improved their mm, the, mm. Um, finances now gst is going to increase now why should they not be why should not this be brought in the concurrent list once we are talking of cooperative federalism sure. giving the states more powers states more independence more autonomy then why not this you know uh, quick closing comments now from all my guests beginning with uh, prempal sharma there's a proposal to to innovate around 400 railway stations across the country and the, the way that this is being done is zero cost to the railways because the railways is leasing out some of its prime land and getting those builders really to develop these railway stations and make them like airport terminals what do you think of that idea Oh, no that's a debatable but i strongly feel this government has courage as well as will merger was one of the step uh, similarly this strategic lines uh, now fair structure is also being reviewed there may be more things there now as you rightly said the station development now the beginning of the blood train so this government has that will and uh, uh, maybe in the coming days what we have just discussed structure the subsidy may be reviewed so if we want to save railways we have to go on those lines hmm. okay fair enough uh, Mr. Arun, you, you know, are we going to see some more ideas coming out like this? You know, out of the box ideas, really like the idea that I just mentioned. You know, I think it's 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 a, it's 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 a good deal. This is a good thing. See, but this does not address the core operation of the railways. Okay, you'll have better amenities at stations. These stations will generate some additional revenue for the railways, which in turn can be ploughed into the core business of the railways. And this is happening at zero cost to the railway uh, railway zone finances. All this is good. but this by itself is not enough you need get a capacity you need more safety you know railways carries a pitiful uh, fraction of the total freight of this country you set up uh, the uh, multimodal uh, you know the container corporation of india it's a very efficient organization but that full potential of that organization and the railways own transport potential has not been utilized so in order to utilize all that you need uh, to again use mr mishra's uh, term you need holistic uh, thinking sure. and you need to integrate all this into an overall transport policy 
and build accordingly. That we are still, uh, you know, only touching on the margins. Fair enough. So, both Jane, you know, when can we see something of this, uh, something of this sort being achieved? You know, optimum uh, level of functioning of the railways because you know TK Arun has just said that uh, several resources are wasted and you know it's, uh, the railways is not running to its full potential. I entirely agree with Mr. Arun on this point that our core job of transportation, unless we, uh, our customer gets the confidence, be it a passenger or be it a freight customer, that the railway will provide the transportation to my choice and let railway charge. So this will require, uh, we are uh, maybe, uh, if we follow the path consistently, once the infrastructure uh, is ready, means double lines, third lines, today there are a lot of capacity constraints. Hmm. So some meaning has been made. For, I will say that progress is very slow. And uh, uh, we have to do something very fast. I see in 10 years time frame, railway will either improve or perish. Okay, okay. 10 years time, railways will that either improve or, or perish. Mr. Because Mishra, close the show. Will not wait. Okay, fair enough. Your point taken. Mr. Mishra, yes. close the show for us with your concluding remarks. I keep my fingers crossed that it doesn't perish because railway is a very, very vital for country's health. If there's no railways, I think everything else will collapse. Okay, fine. On that note, then, we'll call it a wrap on this edition of The Big Picture. I'd like to thank my guests, Primpal Sharma, TK Arun, Satish Mishra, and Subodh Jain for joining me on the program and putting things into perspective for us. That's all the time we have today. See you again next time.